Okay, friends, to get started on this job, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have your truck in an area where it's either ready to be set up onto the lift and it doesn't have to be moved, or in an area where you can jack it up. Either way, you're gonna to need to get under it to service it. So, make sure you're safe. After that, what we're gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and remove our negative battery terminal. The next thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is safely raise and support the truck so your wheel's off the ground and you have access to get underneath it. We're gonna go ahead and pop off the center cover, remove the lug nuts, and remove the wheel. Now with the wheel off, we need to get our inner fender well out of the way. You're gonna notice that you have some little tabs that are coming through. On the top side of that, you're gonna have wires. They're connected and they're held right to the fender well. I'm just gonna come from the other side, use this little fork tool. You can of course try to do this from the top if it's easier for you, or if you're just under here like I am, you can do it right now. Now let's continue on to removing some push clips. Got one there, one over here. And then there's also one that's going to be located underneath the corner here. Now let's move along to removing some of these bolts. Two on the rearward side, and then you'll have two on the forward side. Now we're going to remove some more bolts coming up inside here. Now with everything out of the way, let's go ahead and pull this out of here. Up along the top, there's a lip where this is going to sit inside of. This all separated. I'm gonna try to push this and get this out of the way. The next thing we need to do is remove our starter from the truck. To do that, there's a little cover over the power wire. Just pop that right off of there. You're gonna see that you have a power wire here, another one right there, and then you have some ground wires over here. Let's remove them all. So for us, it took out the whole bolt. So what we're gonna do is separate this so it'll be apart. Now that we have that lower bolt out, we're gonna continue on by removing the other two mounting bolts. If you were to look at the new starter, you can see where the bolt is that we had removed. The other two are gonna be located up above the solenoid and then up a little higher. They're very hard to see, not something we can see with the camera. To get to the upper bolt, it's much easier if you just come in through the top here with a pivoting quarter inch ratchet and a 13 millimeter socket. I'll put it right on the bolt and then I use a nice pry bar just to kind of hold pressure on it while I remove the bolt. All the bolts are out. Let's go ahead and grab that starter. There it is, friends. The thing that we're going to need to do is remove the Y pipe of the exhaust from each manifold. There's one on each side of the engine, obviously. On each flange right here, what you're going to notice is you have a nut, and then on the other side, you're going to have another nut. You need to remove the pair. A lot of times they're going to be very rusted and rotted like this one and you'll probably have to use something like a twisty socket to get it off. Once you get off all four bolts, we'll move along. The next thing we're going to do is remove our serpentine belt by loosening this tensioner right here and getting the belt off of the AC compressor. After the belt's off of the compressor, let's get under there and remove the bolts. Now from on the passenger side in between your power steering rack and your differential, if you come right up here you're going to be able to see where your AC compressor connector is. You'd want to squeeze in the little tab and then remove that. There we are. Check it to make sure you don't see any funny colors, and then we're gonna move along to removing our mounting bolts. You're gonna find three. Two along the bottom, one right here, one right there, and then one located up higher right there. Let's remove those bolts. Okay, now let's carefully lower this down. Now we're just gonna disconnect our crank position sensor. If you wanted to, you could of course remove the nuts that hold your sway bar up to the frame. That's going to give you more room to do what you need to do. With the starter out of here, and of course the AC compressor out of the front area, you have a nice clear view of all of your lower mounting studs for your manifold. At this point, it's a good idea to go ahead and heat those up gently, and then spray them with some penetrant once again. After that, if they look as though they're rotted, more than likely you're going to have to use a socket that looks like this. And this is considered a twisty socket. 
as you bonk this on there, it's going to twist on a little tighter. And then as you continue to try to loosen, it's going to grab more and more. At this point, let's go ahead and remove all these lower nuts. Okay. So while I was taking off one of the nuts, the stud ended up coming out, which is actually great. Because essentially at this point, once you have all of your nuts out, you have to continue by removing all of the studs. That's going to make it so you'll be able to get the manifold off of the actual engine. Now that we have all the studs out of the lower area, let's start making it so we can work on the top. Now to get to the upper studs, what you're going to see is two of them are pretty apparent, but as far as the other two towards the front, they're much less apparent. What we're going to have to do to be able to access these a little bit easier is to remove this bolt right here, which screws into the shock tower, and then we'll be able to remove this shield. Our shield is actually broken, so essentially remove the bolt, give this a little wiggle, and get this out of the way. So at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue on by removing the nuts and the studs of the ones that I can see. All right, so there's one. Let's continue on. Now to get the forward bolts, I'm going to come right up inside the hood area here, and I have a nice view of where the, one of the studs is right there. And the other one should be approximately right here. Um, but this one, of course, is broken inside the engine, which is going to be a nightmare. But anyways, essentially what we're going to do now is use our little twist socket, try to put it in there. I'm going to use a pry bar in between this right here and the socket to force it on there, and then we'll try to get it out. All right, so now that we have all the mounting nuts and studs off of here, at least as much as possible, we're going to continue on by sliding this manifold forward so we can get out the bolts that go into the Y pipe or the lower exhaust pipe right here. And then once we've done that, let's try to sneak it right out right through here. Before we go ahead and take this out of here, let's remove these studs. To remove the studs, you're going to need a socket that looks like this. It's kind of like an oval. Now that we have both those studs off, we're going to come back underneath and we're just going to try to lift up the forward end and bring down the rearward end and we'll get this right out of here. There it is, friends. Now the next thing that we're going to do after the manifold's out is we're going to try to block these ports. The last thing you want to do is get any types of materials inside here because that's where your valves are. If you mess up and you get some material in there, it could potentially mess up the seal. Just take a nice clean rag, fold it up so it fits, and put it in there. Now that we have all of our ports filled with rags so there's no way that any debris can make it inside, we need to continue on by cleaning up the area where the gaskets are going to ride. You'll notice when you remove the manifold that a couple gaskets fell out. There should be two of these. These aren't something that you'd want to reuse. You'd just go ahead and replace these. We'll set it aside. At this point, what we want to do is make sure that we have the rags inside of all of our ports, like I said to do. And then we're going to sand down this area right along here. That's where the gasket's going to ride. When you sand that, you want to be very careful not to use something that's going to be very abrasive, such as maybe something like this. As you scour this up, you're going to notice that you cause scratches, and the deeper they are, the harder it's going to be to seal. What you want to do is use something that looks a lot like this. This is a sanding block. It's going to be as flat as possible. That way there, as we sand this, and then we, of course, put on the new gasket and the manifold, you're going to realize that it makes a good seal because everything's going to be nice and flat. If you were to use a disc and scour everything up, and, of course, make high and low areas, How's it going to seal? We're just going to sand this so it's all nice and smooth. We'll do the same all the way across. Let's put in both of these studs on our new manifold. We'll snug them up. OK, friends, now it's going to be time to install our brand new manifold. Come right up in here. Once we get it into where it belongs, we'll come in and through the wheel well to finish servicing. Make sure you clean out anything that you have inside of it, your ports. Now the next thing that we're going to need to do is line up our manifold studs to the Y pipe down here. As we line those up, we're also going to continue on by lining up our manifold holes to where they line up with the holes in the engine. Once we get everything kind of close, let's go ahead and continue on by grabbing our gasket you're going to pay attention to the fact that it's rounded along the top area and more flat along the bottom. We'll try to slide this in between the manifold and the engine and then start in two of our studs. That way there the gasket can't go anywhere. There we are. I've got those two bolts started. As you can tell, these are looking pretty close. Let's grab our gasket. 
We've got our gasket and our two studs. I'm just going to carefully slide the gasket inside here. And I'll try to start in one of my studs. When you do this, it's important to do it by hand at first. That way there you ensure that you're definitely lined up with everything and you don't strip out any of your holes. Go ahead and bottom this one out and then we'll move along. Okay, let's get our second stud started. Make sure you line up your gasket so the holes are lined up. There we are. Set this in nice and easy. Okay, so now that we have both of these studs in in the rear up along the top, let's continue on by doing the front two. When we do it, you just want to make sure that the gasket's completely situated. After you do that, continue on by putting in the lower studs. And then, of course, we'll torque those to the manufacturer's specifications. Now let's torque these to 106 inch pounds. Now that we have all the studs in and torqued, let's continue on by putting on our mounting nuts. After you snug all these up, we're going to continue on by torquing them to 18 foot pounds. While you torque them, you want to start from the rear and work your way towards the front. So we'll start with number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now that they're all bottomed out, let's torque these to 18 foot pounds. All right, now let's get under here and put on our nuts that hold the Y pipe to the manifold studs. Get these both on, we'll snug them up and torque them to 30 foot pounds. All right, let's get up here to the front and we're going to try getting our AC compressor back in now. I'm just going to try to start in all of my bolts, make sure they're started, and then we'll snug them all up. Once they're all snugged, let's torque them to 18 foot-pounds. All right, let's reconnect in our sensor. Make sure you give it a nice tug, make sure it's completely secured. All right, let's just slide that belt back on there. We'll release this. And then you just want to make sure that the belt's going around all your pulleys properly. All right, now it's time to get the starter in. start in all of our bolts and then we'll torque these to manufacturer specifications. To put in your upper bolts, it's going to be easiest through the top right up here. Once you get all of your bolts in finger tightened, go ahead and snug them up and then torque them to 18 foot-pounds. When you torque them, start with the top bolt and then do the two lower bolts. All right, that was the last one. Now before we can reconnect our wiring, you want to make sure that you have a nice clean mating surface. That way there you can get the most amount of power to your starter. So now it's going to be time to get our wiring on here. The small wire, once you get it up on there, is going to be 44 inch pounds. This next larger wire right here is going to be 106 inch pounds. And then this one wire right here, which is going to be the ground, is going to be 18 foot pounds. Let's get them all on there. Up on there. Put your washer, and then of course the nut. Snug this up and we'll torque it. Okay, so we have all our wires on. You can see I have the larger of the power wires going right here. The smaller wire comes right up there. And then the ground wire is the one that goes right to the edge of the starter. And then of course, connection to the transmission bell housing. Now it's time to get the sway bar back up on here. Once all your nuts are bottomed out, let's go ahead and torque these to 44 foot pounds. Make sure you go ahead and put this plate back in there. Like I said, ours is broken, so it's really not gonna stay in there very well. But essentially, if you just slide it in behind here and then put in the bolt that comes through the back right there, you should be fine. It's gonna be time to put in our fender liner. Something that I wanna mention real quick first though, is you have your wiring harnesses up here with all the little pushy dues there. You wanna make sure that once you put this up and in here, all those get pressed into their mounting holes. Now that we have all of our bolts started going all the way around, including inside the fender well, let's go ahead and snug them up. And then don't forget that you also have a couple push clips. All right, all three of those are put in there. Now let's get the wheel back on here. We'll snug them up and torque them to 150 foot pounds. Torqued. 
Now the next thing that we would want to do is go ahead and reconnect the battery. Then we're going to start up the truck and listen for an exhaust leak. Assuming there's no exhaust leak, you also want to make sure you don't have a check engine light, and then down the road you go.